So far our discussion of uh, dissymmetry of lift has been limited to the main rotor uh, on the helicopter. However, we do have a tail rotor. Our tail rotors are semi-rigid rotor systems and uh, they flap uh, slash teeter just the same as the main rotor does. So let's look at an example of the R22 here. So if you look at the R22's rotor system, you'll notice that the blade spins, or that the tail rotor spins this direction, which is actually the least efficient direction to go. It's actually spinning with, with the rotor wash, which is less efficient. Well, in just a minute, we'll go over and look at the R44, and you'll notice that the R44 spins in the opposite direction, which is the more efficient of the two designs. Probably never noticed that before. But. All right, so looking at the tail rotor here, it's going to be producing thrust coming out towards us. It's going to be pushing air out this direction and pushing the tail off to the right. So as this blade comes around, this would be the advancing blade. And it's going to teeter up, which is towards the tail. And the lower blade down here would be the retreating blade. And it's going to flap down, which would be the equivalent of coming out towards us. Okay. So the other thing you'll notice is this is a delta hinge. What a delta hinge is, you'll see that this is the axis of where the blade actually teeters at. And the blades are actually set to a 45 degree angle to that axis. And what that does, we'll come around here and take a look. What that does is allows, as the blades, so we'll take as an example the lower blade here, as it flaps down, you're gonna see a, a change in the pitch angle as well. So as this blade, teeter's equivalent of down, that would be increasing the angle of attack, right? And as the blade would flap the equivalent of up, that would be decreasing the angle of attack. So if the blade was just hinged at 90 degrees, if the blades rather were just hinged at 90 degrees here, when the blades flapped up or down, the only change in angle of attack it would have would be because of the effect on the relative wind. When you change to a uh, delta hinge arrangement, you change angle of attack not only from the change in relative wind but also the change in the pitch angle of the blades it's a more efficient way of doing it it allows you to actually so what a delta hinge does it produces more of a change in angle of attack for a given amount of flapping up or down so it makes it much more efficient there's less flapping is going to occur here to get the same change in angle of attack that allows you to actually put the blades closer to the tail of the aircraft that's the drive shaft here to be much beefier the pitch lengths to be shorter and is a, a more efficient design all right looking at the r44 again you're going to notice that the lower blade here is the advancing blade the blade spins this direction or up into the rotor wash which is more efficient all right and in this case now, this would be the advancing blade, and the upper blade would be the retreating blade. Well, the <clears throat> lower blade here, since it's the advancing blade, it's going to want to teeter up, which would be towards the tail, this direction. And the upper blade would be uh, teetering uh, the equivalent of down, which would be coming back at, at us here. There have been some helicopters in the past. I know the 407s had uh, a series of uh, problems with excessive blade a tail rotor blade teetering. Uh, in fact, I think in 1999 they brought out an AD note, made them limit the forward speed initially on the 407 to 100 knots, and come uh, to the, and also had to design a limit, uh, a deal to limit the amount of pedal that you could, how much left pedal you could actually put in. If you stop and think about it, when you add left pedal, then you're increasing the angle of attack on the uh, tail rotor, and the amount of teetering has to increase, obviously. And if you were to do that at high speed, so you remember the three things that cause an increase in teetering at being an increase in air, uh, in air speed, an increase in angle of attack, and a decrease in rotor RPM. Well, the first two come into play. If you're flying along at, at high speed, let's say that you're going along in a 407 at 140 knots, in the original 407s at 140 knots, and you were to push in excessive left pedal, if you were to just kind of come in and push the level left pedal all the way to stop, you could see where this thing would flap excessively and actually get a tail, uh, tail boom strike. And I think they had a series of three or four of those. So how they fixed the problem with the 407 is 
they ended up redesigning the uh, couple things. They redesigned the tail rotor. They also came up with a uh, little limiter that's actually airspeed activated, and it uh, rotates into position above air speeds of about, I think, 55 knots, if I remember correctly. And what that lim limiter does is it limits the amount of pedal travel so that you can only go about half pedal. So uh, at speeds above 55 knots, you can't inadvertently go in nearly full pedal and run the risk of a tail boom or, or a, a tail strike with the tail rotor. And then once you decrease your speed back down below, I think it's 55 knots, then the limiters rotate out of position and you've got full pedal traveled again there. And that allowed them then to uh, take the limitation of 100 knots uh, V&E and return back to 140 knots V&E for the 407. So. Okay, so now knowing that the tail rotor uh, has uh, you know, all the same things that uh, uh, as far as the symmetry of lift is concerned on the main rotor also affect the tail rotor, then uh, <clears throat> one of the things we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about it much more extensively, is translational lift, and even more specifically, effective translational lift. But for the short term, effective translational lift is you'll notice when you speed up from about 16 to 20 knots the aircraft the main rotor grows to effective translational lift and the aircraft really wants to pick up and fly well you'll also notice at the same time when that happens you know the tail rotor additionally goes to effective translational lift so as you go through etl and the aircraft picks up and wants to fly you get a left yaw in there which uh, so you started off at a hover you had a whole bunch of left pedal in there as you transition on out and you go through translational lift, you've got to back off of that left pedal. Uh, if not, you're going to end up with your nose to the left there. And the reason that left uh, yaw occurs is because your tail rotor is becoming more efficient and you can back off that pedal onto just about even pedals. By the time you get your airspeed up to about 40 knots in the R44, you're pretty much even on the pedals. Pretty much even. In fact, if you ever noticed it at high speed, speeds above about 95 or 100 knots, you actually have a tiny bit of right pedal in to keep the aircraft in trim. And the reason being is the uh, vertical stabilizer on the R44 is cambered so that with forward airspeed it actually produces some, some uh, you know, pushes the tail to the right so that the tail rotor has to do less work, right? So and that does a couple things. Number one, it's more efficient. And uh, two is it makes the tail rotor a lot quieter. So, we're quite. Have you ever thought about, um, you know, we make mentions about retreating blade stall and, you know, essentially what causes retreating blade stall is you're going too fast. Uh, have you ever thought or reasoned through why we don't really worry about retreating blade stall of the tail rotor? I mean, you got an advancing and a retreating blade. What would be the big difference? All right. Think about that one for a while. Well, the reason being is because the amount of, at high speeds, where you would where you start flirting with B&E and you could get a retreating blade stall with the main rotor, your tail rotor pretty much is pretty much flat pitch. It's not doing anything, really. It's not hardly producing any thrust in either direction. So, since the amount of thrust being produced by the tail rotor is very small, the amount of teetering is very small, and you know you're not going to you you would certainly get a retreating blade stall on the main rotor before you'd ever get a retreating blade stall on the tail rotor